welcome back everybody. Today it's BYOB here at Top Down Commander because it's party time. Cowabunga! Hey Planeswalkers, welcome back to Top Down Commander. I'm your sensei, the Magus of the Salt himself. Today I'm back with a brand new Commander deck tech for you, but before we head into the dojo, please remember to do all the YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, all that good stuff. There'll be links in the description to the deck, and you can always find me on Twitter at Magus of the Salt. But without further ado, let's take a look at the Commander for this week's deck, Tazri, Beacon of Unity. Fresh from Zendikar Rising, Tazri Beacon of Unity is a commander designed to showcase the new party mechanic. A party consists of four unique creatures, a warrior, a cleric, a rogue, and a wizard. Several cards in the new set, including our commander, interact with a number of creatures in our party. Tazri Beacon of Unity is four and a white for a 4-6 human warrior, but Tazri costs one less to cast for each creature in our party, meaning we could cast her for just one mana with a full party. Her activated ability costs a blue, a green, a black, and a red, or you can pay two generic mana instead of any of the colors. And you get to look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal up to two rogue, cleric, warrior, wizard, and or ally cards from among them and put them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Now, Tazri is admittedly a little underwhelming, but we're here to build jank and chew bubblegum. And I'm all out of bubblegum. So let's do this. We could build Tazri in a few different ways. We can just go with party good stuff and jam a bunch of creatures with these types into the deck and hope for the best. Or we could go changeling tribal and build a party quickly out of four random shapeshifters. Note, you do still need four changelings to make a party because each one only counts for one class at a time. Also, I got a five color changeling deck in the works. I think that'll be cooler. We could just use Tazri as a five color ally or tribal commander for like warriors or rogues, but where's the flavor? Where's the special sauce? I want to build around the party mechanic. But what is a party? A party is a group of adventurers who work together, level up, and get stronger together. How do we show leveling up in magic? No, not like that. Getting stronger, improving our stats. Ooh, what about with plus one plus one counters? That's it! Welcome to Tazri's Plus One Plus One Counters Party Bus. Kick off your shoes and let's head into the deck dojo. We start this deck tech like we always do with the essentials. Ramp, card draw, and removal. First up is the artifact ramp. We're running both Soul Ring and Wayfarer's Bobble, which can fetch us a basic. Then we've got Felwar Stone, which taps to add one mana of any color a land an opponent controls could produce. And Chromatic Lantern taps for any color and fixes our mana as long as it's out. For two mana ramp, we've got Farseek, which can fetch an island, mountain, swamp, or plains. Rampant Growth, which can fetch up a basic tapped. And Nature's Lore, that can fetch a forest. We're running all the Triomes, so this can really fix our mana if we get it early enough. Finally, at three mana, we've got Cultivate and Kodama's Reach, which each fetch us a basic to hand and a basic on the field tapped. As far as card draw goes, we're only running a few generic card draw spells. Tezzeret's Gambit is a sorcery that will draw us two cards and proliferate. Guardian Project will draw us a card whenever a creature enters the battlefield. And Greater Good allows us to sacrifice a creature, draw cards equal to its power, and then discard three cards. If we can make a big enough creature, this can draw us a few cards. Plus, there are a few incidental death benefits in the deck that could use another free sack outlet. Spoils of Adventure is an instant for four, a white, and a blue that costs one generic mana less for each creature in your party. You gain three life and draw three cards. It may not look like much, but at instant speed, this card is surprisingly powerful in this deck, where you can cast it consistently for just two or three mana. For spot removal, we've got Generous Gift, Beast Within, and Anguished Unmaking to deal with any permanent. Swords to Plowshares exiles a creature for one white mana. For four and a black, Deadly Alliance is a new card that costs one less for each creature in your party and destroys target creature or planeswalker at instant speed. For one or two mana consistently at instant speed, I feel like this card is definitely worth the slot. For board wipes, we're running two. Cleansing Nova and Merciless Eviction can wipe the board of creatures or other problem permanents in a pinch. Next up, let's take a look at some of the cards that are going to enable our party to level up and improve their stats. We start off with the only two non-party creatures in the deck, Good Fortune Unicorn and Renata Called to the Hunt. 
Both of these creatures will allow our creatures to enter with at least one plus one plus one counter on them. Whenever we put a counter on a creature, Hardened Scales will put an additional counter on as well. Rhythm of the Wild says our creature spells can't be countered, and it will give our creatures Riot, meaning they either enter the battlefield with either Haste or a plus one plus one counter on them. The Great Henge is a legendary artifact that costs 7 in green green, but costs X less to cast where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. For the mana cost, the Great Henge can tap to add 2 green and gain you 2 life, and as if that wasn't enough, whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it and draw a card. Cathar's Crusade is going to put a plus one plus one counter on each of our creatures whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control. At the beginning of combat on your turn, Hadana's Climb will put a plus one plus one counter on a creature you control, then if that creature has three or more counters, it flips into Winged Temple of Araska, a land that taps for any color mana, or for one a blue, a green, and tap, target creature gets flying and plus x plus x until end of turn, where x is its power. The Ozolith is a one-mana artifact that says, whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, put those counters on the Ozolith. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if the Ozolith has counters on it, you may move all counters from the Ozolith onto target creature. This is a great way of keeping big creatures swinging. Now let's start looking at our actual party members with the muscle, the warriors. Okay, I lied. Before we start, here's two honorable mentions. Oketra's Monument is a three mana legendary artifact that makes white creatures you cast cost one less, but more importantly, whenever we cast a creature spell, we create a 1-1 one, one white warrior creature token with vigilance. Outlaw's Merriman is another fun enchantment for one, a red, and two white. At the beginning of your upkeep, you make one of three creatures at random, a 3-1 warrior with trample and haste, a 2-1 cleric with lifelink and haste, or a 1-2 Rogue with Haste, and whenever this creature enters the battlefield, it deals 1 damage to any target. Together, these two cards can really help us set up our party if we need it. Now on to the Warriors. Samet Voice of Descent is our powerful generic warrior. Samet is 3, a red and a green for a 3-4 human warrior with flash, double strike, vigilance, and haste. She gives other creatures you control haste, and you can tap 1 white and Samet to untap another target creature. Tusk Guard Captain gives all creatures with a plus one plus one counter on them trample, and Herald of Secret Streams is going to make all of our creatures with counters on them straight up unblockable. Champion of Lambholt is going to get a plus one counter on it whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control, and then creatures with power less than Champion of Lambholt's can't block creatures we control. Dagatar the Adamant enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters on him, and we can pay one green-black hybrid, green-black hybrid, to move a plus one plus one counter from one creature to another. Rayhan, last of the Abzan, enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on her, and whenever a creature you control dies or is put into the command zone, if that creature had counters on it, you may put that many counters on target creature. Next up, we need some heals. Let's call the clerics. Once again, we start with some generically good clerics. Mangara the Diplomat is a 4-mana 3-4 with lifelink that says, whenever an opponent attacks you with two or more creatures, draw a card. And whenever an opponent casts their second spell for turn, draw a card. Timna the Weaver has lifelink and says, at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, you may pay X life, where X is the number of opponents that were dealt combat damage this turn. If you do, draw X cards. Next up, we've got Micaeus the Lunark, who costs X and a white, and enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on him. You can tap him to put a counter on him, or tap and remove a counter from him to put a counter on all of our other creatures. Exava Rakdos Blood Witch gives all of our creatures with a plus one plus one counter on them haste, while Abzan Battle Priest is going to give all those same creatures lifelink. Conclave Mentor is hardened scales on a body, and when it dies, we gain life equal to its power. Drana the Last Blood Chief is another new Zendikar card. It's a 5 mana 4-4 four, four flying vampire cleric that says whenever Drana the Last Blood Chief attacks, defending player chooses a non-legendary creature in your graveyard. You return that creature to the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it. That creature is a vampire in addition to its other types. Nakara Layer Scavenger partners with Yannick Scavenging Sentinel who is not in the deck. But Nakara has Menace and says, whenever another creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it had one or more counters on it, you may draw one card and lose one life. 
Then Yogmoth Thran Physician is a 4 mana 2 4 with protection from humans. We can pay one life, sacrifice a creature to put a negative 1 negative 1 counter on target creature and draw a card. And for black black, we can discard a card and proliferate. Next up, keep an eye on your wallets, because here come the rogues. First up is Bitter Blossom. For two mana, every upkeep we lose one life and create a 1-1 one, one Flying Fairy Rogue creature token. Thieving Skydiver has Kicker X and says, when Thieving Skydiver enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, gain control of target artifact with converted mana cost X or less. If that artifact is an equipment, attach it to Thieving Skydiver. Zagras Thief of Heartbeats is four and a black and a red, but costs one less for each creature in our party. He has Flying, Death Touch, and Haste, and he gives other creatures we control Death Touch. And whenever a creature we control deals damage to a Planeswalker, destroy that Planeswalker. Edric Spymaster of Trust is going to let anyone draw a card when their creatures deal combat damage, as long as that damage isn't coming at us. And Cold-Eyed Selkie has Island Walk, and when it deals combat damage to an opponent, we draw that many cards. Speaking of dealing combat damage, when Rankle Master of Pranks deals combat damage, we get to choose any number of the following effects. Each player discards a card. Each player loses one life and draws a card. Each player sacrifices a creature. And Grenzo Havoc Razor triggers when any of our creatures deal combat damage to a player, and we get to choose either Goad Target Creature that player controls, or Exile the top card of that player's library, and until end of turn you may cast that card, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast it. Una's Black Guard is going to have our rogues enter with an additional plus one plus one counter on them, but also whenever a creature we control with a plus one plus one counter on it deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card. Nimble Trap Finder is low-key one of the best cards in the deck. It's unblockable if a cleric, warrior, rogue, or wizard entered the battlefield under your control this turn, and at the beginning of combat, if we have a full party, creatures we control gain whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card until end of turn. Are you looking for a good fireball? Well, let's close this out by calling in the wizards. First up is Linvala Shield of Seagate. She has flying and says, at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, choose target non-land permanent and opponent controls. Until your next turn, it can't attack or block and its activated abilities can't be activated. But you can also sacrifice Linvala to give all your creatures hexproof or indestructible until end of turn. Ludovic Necro Alchemist says, at the beginning of each player's end step, that player may draw a card if a player other than you lost life this turn. Master Biomancer will have our creatures enter the battlefield with a number of plus one plus one counters on them equal to the Biomancer's power. Zamet Guildmage has two relevant abilities. For a green and a blue, each creature enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it this turn. And also for a green and a blue, if we remove a counter from a creature, we can draw a card. Fathom Mage has Evolve, and every time a counter is put on Fathom Mage, we draw a card. When Zagana Utopian Speaker enters the battlefield, if we control another creature with a plus one plus one counter on it, we draw a card, and then all of our creatures with plus one plus one counters on them have Trample. And we end the creature suite with Marchesa the Black Rose. Marchesa has and gives all of our creatures Dethrone, meaning whenever this creature attacks the player with the highest life total, or tied for the most life, put a plus one plus one counter on it. And whenever a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it dies, return it to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the next end step. Now before we check out Sensei's top pick, let's take a quick peek at the mana base. For fixing, we've got Ash Barons, Bant, Jund, and Naya Panoramas to find the basics we need or just come down and tap for colorless if it's late game. Bajukabog is our graveyard hate, Gavany Township puts counters on all of our creatures, and Karn's Bastion can proliferate those counters. Then we've got all five Triomes. For five color lands, we've got Command Tower, Path of Ancestry, Exotic Orchard, Grand Coliseum, and Base Camp. And we end our mana base with seven forests, four plains, three islands, three swamps, three mountains, and a partridge in a pear tree. And now for Sensei's top pick of the deck. Sensei's top pick is... Coveted Prize. Coveted Prize is a sorcery for four and a black that costs one less for each creature in your party. Search your library for a card, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. If you have a full party, you may cast a spell with converted mana cost four or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. 
a demonic tutor that could cost one black mana and give us a four drop for free. For this deck, this is the best tutor you can have. And it can drop something powerful for free, like Herald of the Secret Streams, Exava, or Marchesa of the Black Rose. Next up, the budget report. Before we look at the budget report, let's be honest. This deck is 100% not a budget deck. I didn't build this one with budget in mind at all. But for fun, let's take a look at it anyway. As always, the budget report is calculated using TCGPlayer.com and optimizing for heavily played and damaged cards because we're playing jank and you don't have to break the bank on jank. This deck is coming through at a whopping $330.50. Now I'll admit, that feels a bit high to me for a party deck, so let's take a look at some of the most expensive cards in the deck and see what we could cut. There are six cards in this deck worth over $15, and all of them could be cut for budget reasons. They are Bitter Blossom at $35, The Great Henge at $30, Timna at $25, Yogmoth Thran Physician is just another card draw engine, but he sits around $15, and then Rankle and Grenzo are both also around $15, and they're just rogues that do rogue stuff on combat damage. You can replace a lot of these cards with some budget rogues and clerics and maybe just some random card draw and you'll drop the deck almost $100 with just those cuts. But that's the deck. Thanks for partying with me guys. I hope you enjoyed this deck tech. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Did I miss an obvious include? Do you have a cool rogue, wizard, cleric, warrior that you think would be better? Do you have a better idea for how to build Tazri and want to show it off? Well, leave a comment down below or get at me on Twitter, at Magus of the Salt. But until next time, don't forget, Black Lives Matter, fuck racism, punch Nazis, and keep kicking ass.